Okay, so as a continuation of the Haunted House lore, Olivia's storyline was branded with multiple titles throughout the years that it was active. In 2009, when it was introduced for the first time, it was originally called Haunted House 2, intended as a sequel. Then in 2013, they just called it Olivia's Haunted House, and in 2014, it was called Olivia and the Haunted Mansion. The storyline wasn't altered at all during any of the times this event ran, and personally, I think it's terrible, and I'll explain why at the end. But first, if you don't know the original Haunted House's story, I made a video about it recently which contains more overall information on the Haunted House and the story of the Prendergast family. I also go through all the version rundowns of the Haunted House's inception and eventual removal. So yeah, if you haven't watched that one, I'd suggest you pause this video, go watch the other one to hear the original lore, and then come back and be disappointed in the story from this. So, it starts off with you finding Olivia, who tells you that she went outside of the Prendergast mansion to play and catch butterflies when zombies and ghosts snuck into the house. Now, her dad is trapped inside and she can't go back because there's monsters. So, of course, she asks you to rid the house of zombies and ghosts because she's afraid to go in alone. And she hopes that her dad and her doll collection are still intact. She also asks you to go inside and escort her dad out. He's stuck inside the piano room and she believes one of the ghosts holds the key for the entrance. There are a bunch of keys inside so you'll probably have trouble finding the right one, but if you bring her 25 of each kind, she'll help you look through them and identify the correct key. When you guys find the right key, she gives you a letter and she asks you to unlock the door and escort her dad safely outside. The letter is to let him know that she's safe out there and can trust you to lead him out. You go and you find Joe inside of the piano room, showing him the letter, and he says that Olivia has ridiculously neat handwriting. Penmanship can reveal character traits, intelligence, and even whether or not someone is a criminal, so he asks you to sign a card for him. He would love to go see Olivia, but he has a phobia of dark hallways, especially with weird toys that have come alive and walk around. You need to go defeat a few of the twisted toys to clear the way for him so that he can feel a little bit safer. He mentions growing up in a dirty place, so he had adopted a habit of making sure everything was pristine and spotless. He can't even leave the house without everything being clean. He has a butler named Steward, and he asks you to fetch him. When you reach Steward and you tell him he needs to clean up the place, he asks who Joe thinks he is. He's the most experienced servant in the house, and he has the responsibility of managing it, not cleaning, because he isn't a maid. He recalls the brighter days of yesteryear, when Master Jonas was around. At least Jonas showed him a measure of respect, and speaking of which, he recalls seeing his ghost in the toy room the other day, and all of these other ghosts started appearing shortly after as well. He wants you to speak with Master Jonas to release Joe, and he recommends that you collect 10 tombstones to prove yourself to Master Jonas, who may not take you seriously. When you eventually find Jonas, you try to ask him to let Olivia's father go, but he kind of has no idea what you're talking about, saying that if anybody's doing any haunting, it's probably you. But he is curious about one thing. He has seen his daughter around the house, and he wonders how she ended up here. He wants you to go and find her and get him Sophia's favorite doll while you're at it. She used to keep her dolls in a toy crate in her room, and when you go and you fetch it for him, Jonas tells you a secret. The butler's greatest mission is to protect a secret and dangerous place. Jonas will allow you to enter it, and he directs you to ask the butler about this dangerous room. When you go back and speak with Steward, he's glad to see that you're still alive, and he tells you that he had actually decided to clean up as Joe had asked, because he's being paid to. However, there is just one untidy room left, but there's good and bad news. The bad news is that there's a ghost lurking around in a corner of the house. You'll either have to be a conqueror or a victim. The good news is that if you defeat the ghost and you collect 20 Olivia's dolls, you can receive a chair as a reward. He warns you that it's imperative you bring along allies to assist you, because you certainly wouldn't make it back alive without them. So you can now enter within Olivia's secret room. She's hiding somewhere in there, and she'll even show herself to you if you call out her name which turns out to be this kind of malicious spirit inside of the mirror. So you go into the room, say Olivia's name into the mirror, and then it breaks and the spirit attacks you. Once you've defeated this ghost and you return to Steward, the butler begins to tell you the actual truth. The ghost wasn't just any ordinary ghost. It's the ghost of Olivia, 
the daughter of Master Jonas. She was the neglected, forgotten child. She was spurned and returned to the land of the living to seek revenge on her father. She had died of starvation, starved to her very grave. Steward wonders how someone could let their own child die of hunger. However, upon her return, she had found Master Jonas and his family had long been dead. So she directed her wrath to everybody else instead. She composed all sorts of traps, but thanks to you, they're nothing to fear anymore. Anyway, he fulfills your reward to give you Olivia's chair, as promised. He tells you to do what you want with it, sit on it, give it away, or even use it as firewood. But he's glad you didn't become a victim of this cruel twist of fate and Olivia's tragic story. So that's pretty much it for Olivia's haunted house lore. I don't like it, and I'll tell you why I don't like it. You start off with Olivia getting stuck outside and being fairly innocent, like chasing butterflies. And her father, named Joe, is stuck inside. Joe isn't really being kept inside by any kind of weird force or anything. He's just too scared of the monsters to leave. But the rest of the quests lead you to believe that Jonas Prendergast is keeping Olivia's father Joe stuck inside. You also find out that Joe lives in the mansion. He's the new master of the mansion. So why would he really be stuck inside his own house aside from the monsters wandering around? Then, after you've completed all the quests, which have no actual resolution aside from the butler saying there's nothing to fear anymore, Joe still never ends up leaving. You don't ever escort him out. The butler tells you that Olivia is the daughter of Master Jonas, and she was a forgotten and neglected child. So neglected that she had died of starvation. And when she returned as a vengeful spirit, she found her family already dead, so she directed her wrath to everybody else. Now, why the hell is Olivia even outside if she was actually an evil spirit residing inside of the mirror? Why was she innocently chasing butterflies? If she's the daughter of Jonas Prendergast, then who the hell is Joe? And clearly his daughter is Olivia because their relation is clarified at the beginning, but what even is this ending explanation? If the spirit isn't Olivia, why does it look exactly like her and share her name? And why does the butler specifically say that Olivia is Jonas's daughter? And that's just the inconsistencies within its own storyline presented in this Halloween event. Now, let me get started on the original lore. The butler, whose name is Steward for some reason here, looks exactly the same as the original butler, who was a steward whose name was Edmonds, but he specifically mentions serving Jonas Prendergast previously. So clearly, this must be Edmonds. How hard is it to get a name correct? In addition to that, while it's certainly believable that Jonas Prendergast had another child, surely if Sophelia was alive and had a stepsister, she wouldn't have been so lonely. Ludmilla was Jonas's last wife out of seven, and Sophelia was familiar with her before she died, and Sophelia was the daughter of Jonas's first wife. So clearly she would have had to have known about Olivia, but sure. Let's say that Jonas had another child, and that child was neglected, which is easy to insert because Jonas has had multiple wives over time and was always engrossed in his work. But why wouldn't any of the household staff or Olivia's mother had taken care of her? Edmonds clearly took good care of Sophelia, even going so far as to keep stock of her favorite candy. And when Olivia died, why did she come back as a spirit so late after the rest of her family had died? If they had just completely left out that explanation by the butler at the end of the storyline, this whole thing would have been totally fine. They could have just surmised this evil spirit in the mirror as just taking the form of an evil Olivia rather than actually being the spirit of Olivia. Honestly, the easiest way without contradicting any of the lore is to first get the butler's name right as Edmonds, to not have called Jonas's neglected daughter Olivia, and to have not stated that the spirit showed up too late. Literally any other name would have been fine. They could have even explained that this evil spirit of the neglected daughter is what really caused Sophelia to fall to her death, since that's still plausible because it's mentioned that nobody really knows what happened other than she fell. And potentially they could have said that the evil spirit of the neglected daughter is what really haunts the mansion and Jonas's toy machine that creates all these evil toys. Then you could go to the mirror and you could fight the spirit and it simply just takes the form of one of the current inhabitants of the mansion who would have been Olivia or possibly her father Joe. So yeah, I find this storyline 
absolutely terrible. And it's a great shame that the original storyline of The Haunted House, which was amazing, was only available for the first two years during Halloween. Meanwhile, this absolutely terrible story was around every year between 2009 and 2015. The only good thing to come out of Olivia's story was an extremely short party quest in which you literally just typed in the name Olivia into the mirror to fight her with a few people, and an easy to get chair back when chairs were actually rare. And this was the period in which the infamous chimney was introduced, which provided an amazing though highly contested grinding spot. Now, this has absolutely nothing to do with Olivia's storyline, but in 2011, Nexon skipped Olivia's Haunted Mansion and introduced a different Halloween event called Mansion of the Good Witch of the Left Side. I'm sure you can already tell that this is a Wizard of Oz reference, and her cat familiar will be another extremely obvious reference to Schrodinger. At some point, you're tracked down by a cat familiar named Ding Schroeder, who needs your help. His restless, wandering master, the Good Witch of the Right Side, got herself lost again, and the aptly named Wicked Witch of the Left Side took this opportunity to invade their mansion. He was kicked out by pumpkins, and the mansion is probably full of pumpkins by now. Or maybe not. Who knows? What he does know is that the Wicked Witch of the Right Side went to go see her friend, the Wicked Witch of the Bottom Side. And with her gone, Dink Schroeder has a chance to take the mansion back. So, when he gives a signal, you need to run into the mansion and defeat the Wicked Witch and retake it for the Good Witch. You get teleported to the mansion, you head inside, and you defeat the Wicked Witch of the right side. And that's it. There's no real resolution of ending. There's really nothing else to it. Now, you're probably thinking, wow, what an idiot you are. You're mixing up all the names and none of that makes any sense. While I'm not the idiot here, Nexon's writer that wrote these stupid quests is, because I'm just reading off what the quests themselves say. It's literally like three paragraphs of dialogue, and it still manages to get itself mixed up. So let me break down this insanity that somehow did not get QA'd. Ding Schroeder is a cat familiar and claims that his master is the good witch of the right side. This is the first offense because the name of this event is titled the mansion of the good witch of the left side. If he lives in the mansion, clearly his master is the good witch of the left side. He then goes on to say that because his master has been gone, the wicked witch of the left side has invaded the mansion. This is the second screw up, literally within the same dialogue box. Clearly this is meant to be the wicked witch of the right side, because when you go into the actual mansion, you fight the wicked witch of the right side. The cat goes on to say that what he does know is that the wicked witch of the right side went to go see her friend and with her gone you can retake the mansion. This is the third offense, but if you really want to put some misplaced faith into Nexon, this may not be completely wrong after all. This isn't a mixed up name this time, but if the Wicked Witch of the right side is gone, why would she already be there when you enter the mansion? Surely you would try and wait and spring a trap or something. I mean, why else would Ding Schroeder even mention her being gone if it literally didn't matter? Regardless of all of that, I'm not even sure if this is technically meant to be the haunted Prendergast mansion or not. It's a Halloween event, which typically makes use of the haunted house, but it's never specifically stated or not. It could just simply be the witch's house, but it does use literally all the same assets as the haunted house for both the interior and the exterior. And it even includes the Prendergast's portraits up on the wall. But of course, that could just be Nexon being extremely lazy to turn out a half-baked Halloween event. Either way, I'm including this here because it doesn't deserve its own video, but it is still technically the haunted house. So yeah, overall pretty disappointing. I make videos on a schedule of once a week on Mondays. If you want to subscribe and click the little bell icon, you can get a notification for when I actually do get around to making another video. Also, if you enjoyed any of the lore, share the videos with your friends or something. It would actually help a lot. And check out the actual good story of the haunted house. If you haven't seen the first video, seriously, check that story out. It's actually really good. Anyway, if there's anything important that I'm missing, let me know.